Hey, I'm Jesse. Behind the camera is Will, and together we are Top Jaw. Loads of us have gone absolute sourdough mad, and I guess we got lockdown to thank for that one. You might have watched loads of videos, read loads of recipes. There are so many different methods that you can use, and lots of contradicting tips and techniques. We've been tapping up our little Top Jaw black book to talk to the absolute sourdough super elite to get their tips and tricks. Think of this as our sourdough show and tell, showing you guys what we've been learning over the past few weeks. This is Matthew Jones, founder of Bread Ahead, an absolute master of all things sourdough. So what we're gonna make is a no need white sourdough loaf. So you know, quite an ordinary sourdough loaf, but absolutely perfect for this stuff. We're not gonna start this now and finish it in the next couple of hours. This is gonna be a three day process. It does take three days, but you need that time. So the dough develops, and gets that beautiful sourdough flavour and aeration. In the kitchen we go. Getting messy with Jesse. <laughs> I'm gonna take you through what we call a no-need sourdough. What's the no-need? This really simple method of developing gluten. Right. This method is the best way for a beginner, a home baker, to start their journey and make a wonderful sourdough loaf. We're doing this by combining starter, water, flour, folding it together to make our dough. 150 grams of starter. I'm regretting how I just done that. 150! Yeah! Water? How much water do we need, Will? We need 350 grams of water. Why are you doing it in this order? Uh, yeah, even the sourdough masters are not doing it by eye. You can freestyle with the flour. We've got wholemeal flour here if you want to make a wholemeal loaf. Best sourdough for Marmite, in my opinion. Just white flour. 500 grams of this. And you're just going to leave that now. You're just going to leave it alone for about 45 minutes. What we're doing here is we're making the dough or the autolise. Autolise, I thought that was when you rented the car. Yeah. <laughs> no, not autolise, autolise. When you look at that right now, it looks pretty sticky, yeah? Yeah, it feels sticky as well. But it's really worth remembering. That is what a 70% hydration dough looks like. What's it feel like? A sticky dough. When you're mixing this, don't go in with both hands. You just end up in the right mess. Best thing to use is one of these little scrapers. I think this is rule 101, isn't it? Just don't finger it with two hands. I don't know why I went straight in with my hands. Don't go in with both hands. I have a tendency of letting the dough be the boss of me. So you've got to be quite aggressive with it. Show the dough who's boss. Interesting techers, mate. My techers is probably quite poor, but I'm just trying to make sure that everything is quite together. I'm trying to not touch it for too long because if you let the dough be the boss of you, but if you touch it quickly and you're quite smooth with it, then it doesn't have a chance to really grab onto your fingers. The flour is gonna soak up some of that water, but then in 45 minutes, that's where we're gonna add the salt. If we add the salt too soon, the salt sort of stops the aeration process, I think. With a dough, when you first mix it, it may appear to be really sticky, but if you look at that dough deep down inside, those little tiny flour particles are still absorbing the water, and you've got to give them time to do that. Even after 20 minutes, you can see there's such a difference already. Yeah, massive. So you've measured out eight grams of salt. Yeah, eight grams of salt, nicely dissipated over the dough. Yeah. You roll it up this way. Like an Arctic roll. Whoop, other way. And now you roll it up that way. So you've rolled it in both directions. And that's forming tension and getting into this loaf. Yeah. And that's all the kneading you need to do. Just use minimal flour where you can here. Stretch it out a little bit. They love a stretch. Stretch that gluten. Love this technique. I think you're done there, buddy. Spread the bit of dough out on the table and you can see already how much yeah, tighter that really is. Changing. That has developed loads and loads in there. Now I like to give it a cross fold and you only need to do this once. Stretch it out, we're gonna give it a roll this way, using the tips of your fingers here. Pushing it into each other. You're gonna take the end and you're folding it up the other way. Then it becomes really quite low flight then. What I would do now is actually leave that outside for one hour, get the bulk from it and then put it yeah. in the fridge overnight. I'll put the tiniest bit of oil into the Tupperware so the loaf doesn't stick when we wanna get it out tomorrow. Put the lid on so the air doesn't get to it. And then this little puppy goes in the fridge for about 12 to 24 hours. Day two in the Big Brother house. It's time to take our little dough bags out the fridge. We are about to do the bench rest. Tip the dough out 
onto the counter and then you leave it there for about 20 minutes. Yeah, but why are you looking at the book? Because I don't know why you do that. It warms it up a little bit, it relaxes, it just chills on the bench. Less why, more doing. Like, we need to bench rest it for 20 minutes, end of. <laughs> this is what we want, right? These little bubbles that have been stuck to the bottom of this hub. That's what gives you the lovely holes. Down there, it is super sticky. Put the flour over it, gives it a nice non-stick coating. Drape a tea towel over it, stop the air flies and your nan from getting to it. T minus 20 minutes. I think you're meant to do this, but I'm not entirely sure to be honest. So you take the first half, fold it over, and then I guess you want to fold that over like that. Honestly, that's like not the way to do it. You go boom, 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 and then you turn it round, and you go boom, 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 in the other direction. Yeah. You're just building that tension. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's looking like a really sharp little loaf. Yeah, I like that. When I first started making these, it was like carnage every single time. Will's I, first loaf looked like biscotti. Wholemeal flour and semolina. Line the basket. I've seen a few people do this, where they pinch it like that. Like a dumpling. Yeah, putting a bit more tension in it. Back in the fridge for another eight to 12 hours. See you tomorrow. It's a big day. All right, day three is now finally time to make our crusty sourdough loaf. Yeah, how exciting. This has been uh, proving for 12 hours. Look at that, whoa. Careful, mate. It's quite a it's delicate a... little beast, that. It's got a proper skin to it, that. I'll tip this out. One, oop, one, ooh, no. quick little slash, that's good. Oh, oop, gosh. Oop, oop. Okay, that's beautiful, <laughs> Jesse. Made that look so easy. Oh, no. Why are the cuts so important? You're actually dictating where the loaf splits and get a more even rise. Matt told us that the most important thing to do is get your regular oven to the max. This is what a Dutch oven is. Mate, it's burning the gloves. Okay, let's go back in. In the Dutch oven like that. Now we'll put the timer on for 20 minutes. The Dutch oven is keeping the steam encapsulated with the lid on, and that's really critical to the early stages of the baking. Mate, Formula One tire changes. 20 minutes is up, it's time to set the lid off. Oh my God. That looks bloody glorious. After 20 minutes, you take the lid off, and for the final 15 minutes, that's when it like finishes the crust. Alexa, please give us an oven timer for 15 minutes, babe. Oven timer, 15 minutes. Starting now. We really want to achieve that super crunchy crust and then nice and soft, moist in the middle. Moist. Moist. That is looking good. I mean, those cuts are looking high end. You want that to sound hollow. I mean, that is perfect. Yeah, Look at beautiful. that. This one's looking good, but it's all the journey that it takes to get to that stage that, where you have to learn the skill. Matt said it would take everybody about five to six times doing this whole process to really make a great loaf. So don't be discouraged, stick with it. And every now and again, the dough does stuff that you're like, what, I hasn't done this before? No, it doesn't. But it's really super satisfying when you get a loaf out and it's done well. And it's like, I've earned that. Not just made it, I've earned it. It's time to get our little baby out of the oven. Look at that! We've got the lines of the balancing, we've got the scorched bits, we've got the light bits. <laughs> Look how big and voluptuous that is. A simple method that you can fit in around your busy schedule. Big thanks to Matt and Sophia and everyone else that we've watched videos of, messaged to help us on our sourdough journey. Got a loaf here, now I just need some mates to enjoy it with. Hey! Yeah, boy. We've got that nice, real crusty layer immediately into the soft crumb, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, Will. We've absolutely loafed making this video. Don't forget to subscribe to Top Jaw, unless you already have, in which case, there's no need.